Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Event Icons. I'm your host, Laura Lopez of Social Tables. Um, I'm super excited for today's show. It's going to be a good one. Um, and so, as always, uh, for every episode of Event Icons, um, it is the time for you to have one-on-one -on -one time with some event icons. So, if you could just take a quick moment and share with your social networks that we are live right now. It's an hour-long show. Um, we are at event-icons.com. That's where everybody can sign up. So if you want to take a moment to tweet, uh, post it on your Facebook, take a quick Snapchat of it with the link, uh, I would highly recommend doing that. Um, but without further ado, let's get started here. So um, we have two folks from an amazing company called Song Division. And so uh, my favorite question of event icons and uh, one that we ask with every show is what got you both into the events industry? And if you could answer that question and do a little intro about yourself. So uh, let's start with Angus. Uh, who are you and what got you in the events industry? I am general manager for Song Division USA. Uh, Song Division is a global company. So I manage uh, the USA and run most of the events uh, in the eastern part of the U.S., and we also do Canada, and uh, we've done stuff in South America, the islands, so on and so forth. Um, in, that, in the role as general manager of Song Vision, I not only do I do a lot of client-facing uh, activity, designing programs, running programs, so on and so forth, um, and, but this is really my first job in the events industry. I come to this from being a guitar player uh, and songwriter. Um, what Song Division, Song Division does a myriad of interactive musical activities for, for events. Uh, everything from programming playlists to uh, interactive musical game shows to um, uh, what else? Have, what else have we got, Sam? We have a million of these things. <laughs> we have a million. Well, yeah, I'll I mean, a lot of questions later on. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, we... And and but our our calling card product, our original product that brought us to the events industry, is an interactive songwriting program that allows uh, non musicians, people with no musical in inclination whatsoever, to participate in the writing of a completely original song which is then performed with the help of a band of A-list musicians. So that was our first product that brought us to the events industry. And um, I got a call one day uh, from a studio owner in New York where I live saying, uh, I need a guitar player for a session. It's kind of unique. Let me tell you about it. And I go down, I go down to this session and it's me and a bass player that I have toured with uh, professionally and a uh, drummer, a well, the guy who owned the studio is a well-known drummer who's played with um, like a bunch of well-known acts. And, uh, and I guess it was just the three of us. And we were the band, and I met the founder of Song Division, Andy Sharp. And Andy then explained to me what we were going to do, and we were going to bring in these people from uh, um, Lehman Brothers, I believe it was. Oh, wow. Before, it was before the stock market. <laughs> Um, I think we're in 06, 07 at this point. And, um, we, uh, uh, and we did this whole program, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I've done a lot of professional touring as a guitar player. I play for the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, which is a uh, wow. hard rock holiday act that tours here in the States. And um, I, between tours, I'm always doing sessions and this and that and the other thing. And this just was really a lot of fun because the folks kind of, it was like teaching somebody their first guitar lesson. The, the worst thing about teaching guitar lessons is that you have to teach them their second lesson when they didn't practice. And then you're like, oh man, you didn't practice anything. I would have to show you the same stuff again. Whereas on a song division session, all of our musicians get to share the joy of making music with the non-musician in a very fun, you know, not pre non-pressured way, and then uh, and then they have a great time. They get a song out of it. We leave a lasting impact on them about how they can participate in music, how they um, 
can have fun with it and how musicians aren't from Mars, we're just normal people and stuff like that. And and then we say goodbye and I don't have to chase them up next week and find out if they wrote three more songs or if they started taking guitar lessons or anything like that. Oh, wow. So that was my introduction to the events industry. I had a background doing database programming for a division of L'Oreal for the Kiehl's company. Now that's and, rock and roll. Uh, it's the most <laughs> rock. It's the most rock and roll studio line. True. And true. And, um, and in that, I had seen where music could be plugged into events that they had run. So I was like, I had some familiarity with how we were going to be able to implement ourselves in the states. And what I saw is, you know, being kind of the big sales meetings, the kickoffs, all these kinds of things. So that was it. I put all that together. And Song Division was my first job in the events industry, my only job in the events industry, and, and uh, I love it that way. So that's my story. Awesome. Sam, what about you? How did you get your story? Um, like, yeah, similar to Tom Mix. So well, I'm the uh, general manager of the UK Europe office. Uh, I, I guess my story was I did, I, I was a, I'm a classical musician by trade, so I studied classical voice or opera at university, and I, you know, all my musical upbringing was choral music, musical theatre, opera. I did I spent I did five years with Opera Australia uh, when I was younger, and um, but I've always played in bands as well, just original bands and and for fun. And the owner Andy, who uh, yeah the owner of Song Division, he was he came to a, a gig my band was playing in Sydney at a at a, at, a, at a venue called the Basement, and uh, at the time, they, we, we, they Song Division had booked a big job with Microsoft, writing writing an original song as the staff came into their their car park one morning, um, and they just needed a few extra set of hands. I, I was I would have been I don't know yeah 25 26. This was six seven years ago. Uh, so I, my my role was just to sort of help set up, you know, motivate people to write lyrics. Help perform the song at the end, and just and just be, I guess, an extra set of hands. Um, so I did that job, and I was just like, "This is the greatest concept ever. I, I need to get, I, you know, if, if you ever need me, I'd love to be more involved. Uh, I'll, you know, whatever, you, whatever you need. Um, just, just wanted to find out, you know, get, how I could be more involved in, in the company. Um, so then, over the next, I guess, two years, I, I, I did odd jobs here and there, and then. I took over a very small part of the business, which was we used to do um, bachelorette parties. So you you know we'd go to a bachelorette party with another musician, and we'd write a song about how the bride and groom met, as as something fun for for the for the party to do, um, other than eating fruit off guys' bodies. I guess I don't know what you girls do, <laughs> what you crazy girls do. Um, so I, I was doing that every weekend, uh, and then you know doing the doing the odd job with the big corporates as they came into Australia. And Andy said, "Do you want to have a go at, at, at doing the sales for for the Australia region?" Uh, and I said, "Yeah, you know, I'll give it I'll give it a go. I don't I you know knew nothing about events, sales, marketing, um, and yeah, he just said, "Well, that's cool. I'll teach you everything you need to know. I just need someone who's passionate about music and understands what we do and the power of of, of what we do." Uh, and from there, it was going to be, I think, a, a, probably a slower, more gradual progression towards me being the MC and 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 and, and um, I guess sort of handling a, a big chunk of that business. But it all, for whatever reason, it all moved very quickly to uh, me pitching the jobs, designing the jobs with the client, MCing the event, organizing the musicians, sort of just doing every everything. Um, so yeah, I was creative director, uh, and then last year Andy asked if I'd move to London to set up a UK office, at which I said yes because um, I have a British passport, luckily, and I was just up for a new challenge. So uh, yeah, I've been in London for the last nine months and uh, absolutely loving it, even though I'm in New York right at this moment in time. Oh, cool! Wow. Yeah. Um, so. You just end the show right there. You guys have it. <laughs> uh, that is so cool. Um, uh, well, that brings me to uh, an interesting point here. So you both sort of picked up on the importance of music at meetings and events. Um, and so my question to both of you is, why does music matter at meetings and events, especially the events that you've been to where maybe, maybe it's a repeat event they've been to and one year they didn't have music or they had really bad music. Um, and how did they improve it? So why does music matter at events? Sam, you want to go? Uh, first? Yeah, Sam, yeah, you I'll, I'll, give, I'll give it a shot. Um, 
I think music is, everyone knows it's a universal language. So, uh, you know, we've been really lucky. We've done, we've just, we've done 30, we've done events in 30 countries and we've written songs in 15 different languages. So in that sense, it's something that uh, is, is, you know, very relevant um, at, and to most countries and cultures and, and it can be and can be universally delivered. It's also very well linked to memory. So obviously what we're doing generally is writing original songs about things often really dry content, you know, things like sales targets and um, cultural rebrands and things that normally um, I guess are quite heavy uh, and, and, and can be considered boring by some people. So when we get to use those, uh, use music to communicate those messages, where you know, it, it's a much more exciting um, affair and of course, like I said, with memory, you know, we'll have people. I'll have people coming up to me three years later saying I was at an event with Spotify and singing me the chorus of the song we wrote, um, which is, you know, as far wow. as clients go, as with return on investment, you know, they stick with you. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, Angus, but I'm like waking up in the yeah. middle of the night singing Medtronic sales targets. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. So uh, yeah, I guess that I don't know. And, that, 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 and also, it's a, it's, music's a great leveler. So often we'll be doing stuff where we put people in groups to write songs, and you've got the CEO writing songs with like the receptionists or the, the interns, and everyone's opinion and everyone's input is, is, is as equal and as valued as everyone else's. So that's a really cool element, I think. Anything else, Angus? I, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that, those are all the key points. It's that yeah. it, it, everyone has music in their life, so while they may talk to each other all the time, they may have no idea what they what this person appreciates about music or when that person appreciates about music. Are they unified in the in the fact that they think the music at last year's conference was terrible? You know, are they yeah. unified mm -hmm. in thinking that um and uh it so it, it creates a resonance with everybody that's outside of just the work life. And then um it's humanizing and people connect over it. We do a segment in Song Division sessions where we have people share with each other what was either the first concert they ever attended or the first album they ever bought. And I, I did this, so I, I came over to London just a couple of months ago and did an event for a medical group. And the, you know, the, the CEO, the woman who owned the meeting, you know, told me that, you know, Pink Floyd was like her favorite band ever. Oh, and I was cool. like, I'm like, you know, their guitar player, David Gilmore, is the reason I started playing the guitar. So, we, you know, we had these instant connections and everything. And, um, and so that, that's one of the main things. The other thing is it's so easy to get it right. And we've, you know, Sam and I, we've all, and you, we've all watched people get it so wrong at events. It's like not that hard to get it right if you put some thought into it or you engage a professional organization like Song Division to help you make some decisions or at least think ahead into it. Um, and then I see people that are, you know, essentially they're, you know, the event producer, like they're the, the, the top level owner. They have a million things on their plate, like making sure their keynote speakers showed up and all this stuff. And they want to micromanage the music, like down there. It's like, call Song Division. Like, mm -hmm. they will, you know, put that level of care and attention into it just to get it right, just to make sure it's not, mm -hmm. because if you leave it to certain AV companies who shall remain nameless to just <laughs> boot up their, you know, to boot up their, their, you know, playlist, you suddenly have like, you know, house dance music for, you know, what would definitely be a classic rock crowd or something like mm -hmm. that. You know, it's like, just open your eyes and make the right decision. So it's easy to get right. It's just as easy to, get it wrong. Wow. So then how, what are the different ways that you can incorporate music into a more traditional corporate event? So how do you read the crowd and know what kind of music they would be into if you all don't know a single soul in the room? Well, we ask them. Yeah. That's 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 one thing Ooh, we do. That's good, yeah. <laughs> but also, I think having the, the the quality of musicians, you know, the guys have to be able to read the room on stage. So we we very rarely are doing pre pre uh, created set lists of songs, um, even though the mm -hmm. client always wants this. <laughs> They're like, I need to know exactly what songs in what order. And it's like, well, we're not going to play. Uh, you know, if, if the dance floor is dead or people are trying to talk, then we're not going to play an ACDC song. Um, and 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 being flexible and versatile on stage is a big one too, I think. 
Mm -hmm. um, so my next question, I, so, so in prepping, whenever I prep for event icons, um, I always just do a little bit of um, online digging, uh, aka uh -oh. online stalking. Um, <laughs> no, nothing, no, there's nothing bad. That's Photoshop, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there is this really cool photo, and I think that this was definitely from a Song Division event, or um, Song Division had some um, hand in this one event, but there's an event with Richard Branson, who's on stage, he's singing, I think he has a guitar in his hand, um, can either of you tell me how you all got that gig, and the story behind it? Sam. <laughs> yeah, so that Sam was um, got a kiss on the cheek. From yeah, I got I got, got past Bob Branson on stage. <laughs> I have to share that photo. That's if you if, if you want to go to my LinkedIn profile, you can see it on there. Um, <laughs> so what happened? So we, we 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 met. That was a job I pitched on and, and won in Australia. We met with we met with Virgin and we explained what we did. Um, and and they're obviously an amazing organisation. Um, and and fit in well with what we do because they they really um trust the people that they work with. Um. So we met with them and we explained what we did, and they said, "Great, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch," which is generally the sort of the response you know it's like at that, at sales meetings. We'll let you know when we have the right event. And we thought, okay, well, that you know that was good. Your fingers crossed. And then, you know, two or three months later, they they emailed me and said, "We've got the event for you guys." And um, they said, "You know, Richard Branson's coming to Australia for a meet and greet with 1500 Virgin Australia staff." And we, rather than him just flying in in a chopper and waving and then getting out of there, like what what can we do to create to do something that like that that that, that, that will that they'll never forget, like that he will never forget and that the the staff will never forget. So we pitched um, a concept whereby a month before the event, an email went to everyone attending saying. Richard's coming to town. Send in a four-line poem about what you love to work for, what you love about working for Virgin Australia, um, and we're going to perform the song when he gets there as a surprise. And if your lyrics make the final song, you will get a private meet and greet with him, plus a signed copy of the lyrics and a photo, and you'll get to be up on stage for the song. So yeah, we got. I think we got like 400 entries, um, and like. Wow. Yeah, talk about like you know people who love where they work. There were people sending in photos of their virgin tattoos, um, and there were wow. you know really great lyrics. I think the, very, the first lyric of the song is like, "My parents told me I should be a surgeon. I said no way. I'm working for Virgin," and like so really cool, fun <laughs> stuff. That's so cool. yeah, so we we got the lyrics, we picked the best ones, um, we we created a song. We went into a studio, we recorded it. Then the song went out to everyone attending, saying, "Right, learn the song. We're going to be performing it for him in two weeks or whatever it was." And then we, we the, you know, in, at the Virgin headquarters in Brisbane, in Queensland, uh, which are quite big, we, we threw like a mini festival. So we had the bar, there was a barbecue. We had a, a band playing uh, all day, all afternoon of guys that play, have toured with, you know, in excess and written songs with Kylie Minogue and CR and, and our best Australian musicians. And we played a covers, few covers sets, and we and and we taught and we rehearsed the song a few times, and we we made a few actions, and. Um, yeah, then he came in and it was like a one, it was like a, the Beatles were like he got absolutely mobbed walking even just getting to the stage was was like scary, uh, and then we yeah we did the song for him and he like crowd surfed during the song and um, wow. yeah and then at the end he started pashing everyone on stage or he said who wrote the song and I said well all these people up on stage your staff and he started pashing them and I obviously said well I actually wrote a couple of lyrics as well so he gave me a nice big kiss on stage too which was nice. <laughs> Um, yeah, that, that, was, was, that was when you peaked in your career. <laughs> yeah, all been downhill from there, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, so now we need to do another one. Yeah. What's, and what's fascinating there is that you know that program has been replicated. Like that just speaks to how Song Division operates. Uh, yeah. In that you know the needs of the job, we we can transform our process. Uh, you know in any number of ways in order to meet the needs of the specific event. So, yeah. some we we strongly believe in the you know the dynamic creation of a song in real time. We've done that in you know under fifteen minutes, like we've done it crazy quickly, and we we've done those sessions where and we we strongly believe in that. However, some folks they want. We really want to get it ahead of time, so we've done this thing where you solicit lyrics. We've also done it where 
we just use a questionnaire that may prompt people like, if you want to make your answer rhyme, go for it, you know, but you don't have to. And then we just get a lot of information from them and we create a custom song, which is a long-standing, uh, you know, product for the events industry mm -hmm. to just do a custom song yeah. prior to the event. But we crowdsource the content and or the lyrics as done in the, in the Virgin example, so that they really get their own song, and then we present it interactively in some yeah. way. So there, where Sam did it, you know, it was presented interactively, so that the folks that really read the email and participated in the lyrics, you know, they got on stage. But then everybody who was there got to hear the song like three times. You rehearsed it with the crowd of yeah. thousands, you know, before he got there. So whatever the needs of the event are, you go with the found elements. You plan accordingly, and you plan to win. And, you know, it's the same for what you do for events and what any vendor does for an event. It's like mm -hmm. you have to, you know, just get the scope of it in your sites and then make the right plan, and we just modify our process. Yeah, and I think events. Angus and I love that. I mean, I do. I, I assume Angus is the same. I, that's my favorite part of what we do is sitting down with the client going, well, okay, what's the details of your event and what can we do that we've never done before and how can we make any of the challenges, how can we turn them into something really cool because um, one thing we are, you know, we're not off the shelf, uh, we, have, mm -hmm. we, have process, we have offerings and we have processes but no two events are the same mm -hmm. uh, and, and I love like, you know, coming up with it, sitting down with the client and going, let's do something that we've never done before and, and, and something crazy and obviously we do it around our process and what's, what we know works but uh, that's the fun part, coming up with something, and, and, and that's what, like, you know, everyone talks about them these days, events, it's, it's about making them unique and unforgettable, mm -hmm. so that, that's what I love about it. And music and an event is just such an intangible that makes such a big difference, an mm. event. Um, so, you know, I know for the planners who are watching um, the show and who will watch the recording of the show, I know that one thing that is huge in the events industry is the fact that a lot of events budgets will be shrinking or the lot of, mm -hmm. that's one of the big predictions is that you know a lot of times people look at events as a cost center so for mm -hmm. a planner who is watching this this episode today um, how can that event planner show the return on investment of music um, you know for their boss or for somebody who needs to approve this budget how do you show the ROI? You can handle that Angus <laughs> <laughs> Angus, yeah, nice. How, I, you know, or maybe if you've ever had a client that was, you know, maybe it was a dream client that you all were trying to land and they were right. just really on the fence. What was a way that you were able to show the value? Well, it's, it's, there, there are a couple of things that are interesting about that question. One is that a thing that we've, you know, we've had to try and thread the needle on is where is the budget? Like, yeah. you know, when you're, when you're, you're going across the entire event, you know, you're looking at it and it's like, because we have full band programs that, you know, wind up fulfilling the entertainment end of their, of their programming. So you know there's going to be a certain amount of money sitting there. But then because we have the, well, because we have the processes to make it a full-blown team building slash conference energizer, um, slash keynote speech, you know, so, you know, it sits in the same spot as a keynote speech, that kind of thing. Um, you know, maybe, maybe they're that kind of organization where they're like, we just really want to know that everything that is happening in our event is connected. So we use that to that approach on both budgets in order to show them that there's probably a cost savings by by getting it all together in the overall and and then at the same time they you know all the things that Sam just said in, in the answer to one of the other questions regarding the resonance of music and how it sticks with us and it's stuck with you know our clients over the years because the people use the songs in like their highlights reel mm -hmm. and we, we, we do events where you know they're not they're they're contracted as not for release to the public you know it's a okay. it's a, it's it's a work for hire provided it's you know internal to their mm. organization they have to 
it's separate if they want to, you know, you know what, I love that song. It needs to be our jingle for national release. Well, that's a separate conversation. So, <laughs> that's never actually happened for us. It's so. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but you're but, you're waiting for your big break. We, yeah, we know exactly. it's gonna. Happen. Yeah. Um, but the the so so they can use it for whatever they want internally. And we've had these events where, like, we literally write the song, you know, interactively with the group then record it and put it on a video clip and they use it and it's already ready to go by the next morning. Like, here's mm. that song that we wrote yesterday. It's already the soundtrack to our highlights reel from yesterday, from, you know, on the next morning. Yeah. Or it's and on the USB, which goes in the, you know, the goodie bag, the thank you bag to everyone mm. the next day. You know? Yeah, it gets sent out afterwards. It becomes a keepsake for the event. The songs are usually in some way uh, linked to the event itself so that it's not only like something about their company or their association or mm -hmm. resonates between um, users and a you know kind of a, a B2C there's an experiential marketing element to some of our programs. Ah. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it has all that connectivity and those are the things that we try to sell them on that end when they're that type of client. When they're more like well, we, we always had the band budget, so if you guys can do your thing towards the end of the day, do your interactive thing, and then we'll get all that, yeah, let's go for it. So we're that one element different than hiring just a regular cover band, and we're that one thing different than hiring you know, just another team-building activity or keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. And we're yeah. also lucky that... Um... Generally, yeah, well, ninety-nine percent of the time, we 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 blow it out of the park, and the client's really happy to to share a testimonial, like a video one or written testimonials, which is really good to show other clients. And we've been really lucky to work with super big brands like McDonald's and Coke and and the major banks. Um, so that that helps a lot with getting clients over the line, and 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 we do the post event surveys and and, it, and you know every, every so often the client will share their post event survey which might be up at oh, wow. 400 attendees and and that will there'll be a specific part about what they thought of song divisions and uh part you know our part and, and we we generally score like the top of, of of in terms of all the content going on and that's mm -hmm. not you know that's just because like i said we're there we're generally the fun part of the event mm -hmm. uh, so so we always score high in that so those kind of things um Really help to get to get clients that are on the fence over the line, but you just, yeah, you're going to get that every time, you know. We I just did an event in London for about 100 sort of 50 plus year old men, all engineers, and and you know you're, you're going to get the, you 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 got the bosses before that event yeah. pretty worried about how um you know a skinny 30 year old Australian is going to get them to write and perform original songs, but uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then yeah, then you get the testimonial, and they're just like, I can't believe you pulled that off, and 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 that's that just and that comes back to a the process and b the musicians that we use. So there's a real sense of authenticity and rock star, um, yeah, I guess yeah, authenticity. So, wow, yeah. um, Angus, you alluded to something really interesting, um, which is the legality of music, um, and before we went live, I know that we were talking or. Or maybe it was after we went live, but um, you know, sometimes people just want to whip out their Spotify playlist and just hook it up to the speakers and just have that be it. But um, as their entertainment for the night. But um, is there any, you know, are there any legal implications in in using music at events, either just in general that you can maybe inform some of our newer planners about, um, and then. Uh, and I guess are there some basic do's and don'ts when it comes to music at events? Well, uh, on, uh, regarding the legality, uh, mm -hmm. Song Division's founder, uh, Andy Sharp, mm -hmm. wrote a very informative uh, piece um, as, a, as a blog entry or it's, or it's in a magazine. Yeah, I'll see if I can find the link while you talk yeah. to That Because we wanted to, you know, we, pe people are interested in, you know, making sure they're not doing anything wrong. Spotify is awesome. We we use it. Uh, we you know we design playlists on it. We use it. Most you know most of the venues are paying their you know ASCAP, BMI, CSAC uh, licensing 
So, you know, anything that's licensed through those uh, various organizations is legal to play. The licensing has been paid for the venue and, you know, you can play it from whatever, uh, you know, playback option you have. Um, uh, you know, event to event, sometimes you need to vet certain specific restrictions, concerns, so on and so forth. Uh, but for the most part, um, the licensors are in place, and so whatever you, whatever is best for you on your event. I think the the hardest thing with most events is like making sure that the Wi-Fi in the ballroom is. <laughs> oh, and that's a whole other show. <laughs> there's infrastructural elements, you know, that are that are going that that wind up being of a concern to an organization like ours. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, sorry, the second part of the question. So I, I recommend that we, we share the link to Andy's article. Yeah, I've just I've just added that to the um to yeah. the window or to the yep. more complete. And what was the second part? Was just um, and so do's what and are don'ts? the do's and don'ts of music at an event? So this is more, I guess, for any of our newer planners who are watching today's show. What are what are some basics? Well, you you have to be savvy enough to to you have to think ahead to um workplace appropriate that's like mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's huge and and it's really interesting because we host lip sync battles and stuff like that and some of the stuff oh. that's been like the most successful songs on late night TV do not pass the lit, litmus test for workplace appropriate yeah, yeah and, baby baby got backs not yeah, really appropriate. yeah <laughs> things like that I mean it's like everybody wants it but but it's like yeah. And, and this is part of what we do with our songwriting activities and everything. It's like we know why you enjoy it when you're listening by yourself, but you have to mm. think forward to what is that, what, how is that going to play out in a room full of coworkers and, or an association? Like, yeah, it might be, and it might be funny on the night, but two weeks later everyone sort of, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. that was a bad idea. So we've seen that. And, and we we can you know we know that that's we we know the workarounds. Um, yeah. So and then I um, well do's other than like if people are talking you can't play an ACDC song but really you can always play an ACDC song. People want to listen to music. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's like I've, I've had people balk at it's just like guaranteed you will fill the dance floor. It doesn't matter. Go for it. Yeah. Or, or Michael um, Jackson, he's a he's a good guy too for me. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so right, we we've all got we've we've got our winners. It's, it's interesting to watch as we you know we work with bands all over the world. Like we our music we pull you know in the states we've got Vegas, Southern California, Florida, you know New York area, Seattle, Northwest. We got bands. I got bands everywhere, and I look across the playlist, and I like they have. The, you know, seventy-five percent of the same material. Mm. Like these guys know what's working. But the thing that the thing that's important and that we stress with them is that you have to have a portion of your sets that rotates to to appeal to the younger set. And yeah. you're going to watch a list of about ten to twenty songs. That has to keep rotating, and then one may stay mm -hmm. for the next ten years. Yeah, but you're going to keep rotating that. But you're still going to have this classic rock set, that danceable classic rock, that yeah. is going to is going to still be there. Yeah, the young people will always dance to Summer of '69, but the you know the older people may not necessarily dance to Daft Punk. So it's mm. kind of, it's one of those situations where. It's very interesting, but it is, it's very much like, a, and, and we've seen this a lot, and what we get requested to do is the planners know that most of their demographic are in the 40 to 55 range. Mm. Mm -hmm. They are actively seeking to hire in the, you know, 25 to 35 range, and they mm -hmm. don't want the new hires to feel like, oh man, I just took this job with a bunch of oldies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely true. So you mm -hmm. have to you have to walk the seam on that and figure out, you know, what of the new stuff is going to have enough appeal for everybody and yeah. still be welcoming to the new mm -hmm. hires so that, you know, they don't feel like 
they've just walked in on a club that they're not really welcome at. Mm -hmm. And then what's also just going to keep, because I mean, let's, I mean, for the, you know, in the 40 to 55 set, like that, you know, that party is like, you know, I know if the kids aren't here, you know, mm -hmm. they're like, they're going to stay in the ballroom yeah. and party. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so by the end of the last, by the end of the, you know, the last set, you know, the classic rock is like still pumping because, you know, they're the guys that, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're sticking it out because then, mm. so anyway, those are, that's some of what we've seen. I don't know, Sam. Yeah. You could, yeah. yeah. Sam, do you have any do's or don'ts? Well, one thing that happens at Song Division events is, and that what we're obviously really proud of is we very rarely are like band and entertainment, uh, you know, uh, sorry, our audience and, 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 you know, we're the band and you're the audience and we'll play the song. It, it's, yeah, so normally we're working with them throughout the day and we're, and we're very working with them very closely at times, you know, in small groups and you, you build a bond with them because you are creating a song with them and, 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 and then you get up and you perform them and you, sh and you share this bond of performing on stage, which is quite special. So then... Uh, Add eight to twelve drinks to that, and and a party <laughs> set at the end of the evening, and all of a sudden, yeah. everyone in the audience thinks that they're either in the band or best friends with the band, and they can do whatever they want, and they and you know it starts getting a little bit scary because the stage is getting stormed, and people are just jumping up and grabbing a mic and singing along, and so you 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 need to sort of control the energy and 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 let people know like you're welcome, you know this. You're welcome on stage at this point, and we'll often we'll we'll identify people that are really good singers um, mm -hmm. in the group, and we'll ask them back up to do it to lip to, to sing a you know to sing a song with the band. Yeah. But there needs to be a point where okay, you know we are we're we're, we're the pros, and, and 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 as much as we want everyone to be feel like rock stars and up on stage, there is uh, ninety percent of the audience who are like okay, now I just want to watch the band play some songs, and I've watched mm -hmm. you know Kelly from ID I, IT do Mustang <laughs> Sally, and it was funny, yeah. but I want to. I just want to watch. I just want to enjoy the, the music now. So that's always a challenge because I'm I'm always really encouraging. Yeah, let's come up on stage and and lip sync a song, and then you get um you know the the venue going. Um, stage is no going to collapse. Can we get thirty people <laughs> off the stage now? I was like, so yeah, we'll always check the wait wait points. Always check the wait of the stage. Do. That's um, a do. Then, Got it. Always check the, the wait restriction. So, Got it. Yeah. And to bring it back to our more to you know the the team building like the interactives the songwriting um, one one specific don't is and I've I've said this in like magazine article interviews before is never ever put a bar or a buffet station at the back of the room during a team building activity. Yeah. Like, oh. People love to get some drinks going on when they're writing the song, you know, if we're doing it like at the five o'clock hour and something like that. Has to be mm. you know, beer and wine already placed on the table. Yeah. Or you know, or, or, and and usually that's the best. Like it should just feel like because a lot of the best songs are written around a kitchen table or something, you know, like the guys are just sitting mm -hmm. around. Guys and gals are sitting around. And so that that's a thing. If there's ever this thing where people are going to the back and of the room, off, yeah. lining up, it's just that's a death knell to team building or anything where you really want the engagement. Okay. And that's that's what that's our pitch is you know engagement. And the and the the key thing to engagement is that what are you, what are you going to make happen at this event that they could not you know. It's not like something like, oh yeah, I went to San Antonio, and there was this this thing where we wrote these songs, blah 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 blah. blah. The next time that person goes back to San Antonio with their wife and kids or family or whatever, like mm -hmm. they can't have that same experience again because they're True. not, you know what I mean? Like so, yeah. you you have to if they get the engage if you get them engaged in doing this mm -hmm. thing. Like it's money can't buy in a certain sense. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way to do it in like yeah, I'm gonna go back to, you know where wherever the low the destination is, but if you don't have the song division team and the whole thing, like you don't have the same experience of the place. So Wow. Speaking of experiences, Joan who's logged on. Hey Joan, um, thank you so Hi, much Joan. for this amazing comment. So it says it's Joan from Limra and Loma. 
As an incredibly <laughs> happy customer who worked with you in Bangkok and Las Vegas, I can honestly say you brought a magic to our events that was beyond our expectations and ended our events with an energy unsurpassed by any closing production that we've had in the past. Wow. Well, just shoot, shoot through your bank details, Joan, and we'll get that payment off to you. <laughs> I'm just Thanks, Joan. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so that was that was awesome because what actually happened there, so we do keynotes as well. We have we have a bunch of different offerings. We have, and, and the keynotes are, you know, like TED Talks, interactive talks, yeah. ones around music and innovation, ones around music and leadership, and ones around music and sustainable storytelling. So we did an event. Well, yeah, we, 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 Nathan, our US, um, one of our US sales guys, he won an, an event with, with them. Uh, in Bangkok, which I went over and did, um, and and that would have been a year and a half ago, and then they 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 wanted to, to use us again uh, with the U with the in Vegas. It was Vegas, right, Angus? Yes. Yeah, and um, yeah. it was really cool because it's the same. It's, it's the same keynote. It's a it's a keynote on innovation, and um, it was it was really nice. From you know, I think oh, there's always that pressure because they go. Well, we, 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 that was great. We want you to go over and do it again. And I sort of said, "Well, I won't do it. I, I don't do it in the U.S. But Angus will do it, and he's mm -hmm. far more accomplished musically than, than I am. He'll be great." But the, the the fact that like that that she would say that is that um, you know two different people delivering a, a, a similar experience, and you know that that's really nice. So thank you, Jan. Yeah. terrific. They were terrific to work with, and mm. uh, everything. You know, it's just it was it's classic because you know, as Sam was saying, you know, we are process and content driven. Um, so if if you're getting it delivered in Bangkok with Sam, you were with Christo when you delivered it. That was just me. That was just oh, me. Yeah. It was the you know, it was one man show, and 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 coming back to you know, I guess you know, challenges. That was um. That was six different languages. So there were people in there that were that was um. It was Indian. Japanese, Mandarin, Cantonese, English, obviously. So they were people that spoke very little English, but there was live interpreters in little booths around the room, and people had headphones in. So, like again, a little bit concerned about how it was going to how it was going to go. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I just said at the start, and and these people, that's an association. Um, you know, they don't all work together. No one knew each other. Very reserved audience. Very quiet room. Uh, and yeah, at the start, I just said, hey, you know. Firstly, I'm going to speak very clearly as possible, but please let me know if you don't understand a word I'm saying. And secondly, I'm going to put you all out of your comfort zone for the next hour, but I promise you, <laughs> like, you're only going to get out what you put in, and we're going to have a bunch of fun, and I'm not going to embarrass anyone or make you do anything you want to do, so we can all just, you know, you go for this and, and enjoy it. Uh, and they totally backed it, these, these guys and girls. It was, it was awesome. It was probably, it potentially, probably was what, going to be one of the challenge, most challenging events I've done, and probably one of the most... Um, most rewarding, and I will get something in a second out of my guitar case. That someone came up to me from Sri Lanka and gave me a framed little Sri Lankan, um, I guess, a gift, saying how much he loved it. And it's been in my guitar case since that event. It's my little good luck charm. So I'll go get wow. it just to prove you how good it was. Wow, we, that's awesome. We had a we had an international. Uh, we did an event in London for a um, direct selling organization. And it was a um, it was a recognition event for people that you know had had uh, sold kind of the most. This is a different client, um, mm -hmm. and um, so I'm over there and we're doing our rock and roll game show, which is mm -hmm. just a, there's a bunch of challenges. Uh, there's there's music trivia. There's kind of name that tune done with a live band. There's oh look at that. That's so cool. That is my what little is, street. What is on it? It's a okay. So I have just discovered that the trip to America hasn't been good to it. So that's a bit sad. But it is a framed Sri Lankan. Oh no! Yeah. But so anyway, it's, it's, it, it travels in my guitar everywhere I go, and it's my good luck charm on events. And you know, this 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 guy just came up and said, "I love that. I want you to have this as a gift to say thank you." Like, that is so cool. Yeah. Sam, I, I was telling the story of, of this event that I did in London about a year ago for a direct selling company where huh? we did the rock and roll game show. And at some point, at one point in the rock and roll game show, there's a lot of things that get people up on stage. And one of the segments is called Sing Me Something. And so it's like, if you can sing me something, you get a bonus point for your team. So it's really like, 
because the floodgates open sometimes, and it's like you start getting all these people. And what's really great about it is that the rock and roll game show gets people on stage and singing way yeah. earlier than they do in karaoke. Yeah. So, you know, there's always yeah. there's always those events where it's like, oh, I missed the karaoke. I always leave at nine o'clock. But if mm -hmm. you put the, if you front load the evening with the rock and roll game show, you mm -hmm. get these moments. We do the singing something segment. You get these people up, and then suddenly everybody gets the richness of it. Wow, that person can actually sing. It yeah. So we, we go to that, and because it's a direct selling organization, it's hugely international, um, somebody comes up and sings their national anthem. <laughs> and then before you know it, I have a line of like, you know, 20 people ready to sing their national anthem. And I was just like, and then you can't tell anybody no at that point. Yeah. Right. And that's the whole lot. thought ahead on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the only which is national anthem. Yeah, well, we do, I, I ask for five guys and five girls separately when I've done it lately, and I don't tell them what the song is, but they have to do a verse of a famous song, and it's mm -hmm. hysterical, because I get the girls up first, and they do something like, it's raining men, or girls just want to have fun, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, all right, guys, your turn, first five guys up here, let's go, and then these five big blokes normally rock up on stage, and I make them do I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor, and it's <laughs> just so funny making them do a verse each of that song. Uh, so, yeah, it's always, it's, I, I, there's nothing better than, like, tricking people in that little situation. <laughs> but I'm sure they have fun regardless, because everybody oh, knows the words to that song. Oh, 100%. So, nothing yeah. better than, you know, a, a, a big burly guy who's had a couple of beers singing about how he will get over the lost love of his life. Great. <laughs> Well, that's a that's a that's a little trick we've done with the lip sync battle. Uh, to deliver lip sync battle, person requests you know their jam, but you put up the chipmunks version of it. <laughs> that's yeah. good. I love we're that. Not, we're, we're, we're nice people. We are nice people. Professional. Yeah. <laughs> Professionals don't get it twisted, folks. Yeah. Um, so that brings me to another uh, good question. Here is. Um, can you guys tell me about maybe what is currently trending right now in music and um, and how that is delivered in at events if if at all any any trends in music question yeah live or like live. or how how music is delivered is there anything that's trending in that way in terms of you mean in anything or the corporate in, world in or events or? well so um, Angus, you brought up a good, a good example. So the uh, the rock and roll game show. That's kind of an interesting thing. But is there anything that you see that's trending? And like the lip sync battles, that's huge as well. That's that's um, that's super popular. Are there any other right trends now. that you're seeing, and and how music is delivered at an event? Well, this gives me a great opportunity to talk about our two newest products. <laughs> oh my goodness! Just what in a, time for Christmas. That was not a setup. That was not a setup. I did not know this was coming, but do so, tell. Do tell. Never, so, so we've we've gotten very good at delivering the lip sync battle, and I think a lot of people are trying to deliver it as well as we do, and that's cool, and we appreciate that it's a it's a hot item. Um, I think that. Um, additionally, what what we've seen now that we're about to roll out is a carpool karaoke that you can do in about the same footprint as a photo booth would entail yeah. on, on a on, you know these events with multiple activation stations. So that we see this a lot where people are like we want to get the whole club and then we're going to have you know a fire breather and we're going to have a photo booth and we're going to have that and we're going to have this and we're going to have that. So we wanted to put song division in these rooms uh, and what's the what are the most effective ways. So one is carpool karaoke with like a, just a you know kind of your like a windshield on your five yeah. and dime yeah. store version of a back seat and mm -hmm. you know film yourself film like 30 sec 30 45 seconds of the song and then you know you have it um, similar footprint to that is something that we came up that that is merges the idea of a photo booth with song divisions super quick highly interactive songwriting activity which we call the selfie song ooh okay the selfie song is a lightning quick songwriting session with you and maybe you and your friends 
uh, walk up, you answer like three questions like, what's your name, what's your favorite kind of music, and what do you like best about being at this event sponsored by, so it has, again, has some experiential marketing yeah. element to it. Our facilitator with acoustic guitar or electric guitar, you know, whatever we can fit in the space, you know, says, okay, gets about six lines of lyrics so it sounds like a verse and a chorus, and then it's performed, mm -hmm. you put on fancy sunglasses, whatever, you yeah. get literally a 20 to, you know, 20 second long thing filmed on your phone. You can hashtag it and share it cool. all you want. It's your selfie song. So instead of a selfie, you have a selfie song. Yeah. I, think that's cool. I think that's the best answer to your question about what's trending in music and events. Trending in music. Mm. I, can't, I can't wait to see that. Yeah. I'll just give some examples. Mm. Yeah, well, like, I'll, um, I'll share the link so we... Uh, yeah. I'm, IMAX is coming up, obviously, in, in yeah. Vegas. Yeah, are you going to be at IMAX? We are at IMAX and we're doing the backseat. We, 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 we're calling it backseat karaoke. Uh, so we're picking up industry heavyweights from their hotel and we're driving Ooh. them to IMAX every morning and driving them back to their hotel afterwards. And I'm interviewing them and we're going to do a karaoke song and, you know, interviewing them about what they love about the events industry and IMAX. And, uh, and then they, they pick a song and we, we all sing it together in the car. And we've done a couple of preview episodes. So we've done one with Karina and Miguel from the IMAX. Karina is the CEO. Yeah. We did one down. I did one with her in Brighton a few weeks ago. So that's up online. I'll find that link as well. Um, so it's just a way to, to, to uh, you know, promote the event, to promote the events industry, to have some fun. Obviously, you know, IMAX is an event for event planners and, 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 and whatnot, but you know that could be that can be done um, at internal conferences where you might have the senior leadership team or the CEO being interviewed in a pre-recorded carpool karaoke style video to open the conference, and then they come up on stage and our bands playing the song that they were doing karaoke to live. It, that they were doing in the car, and our bands playing that live as a big high energy opener that the CEO fronts the band for. So stuff like that. Uh, which is really fun. And then also with the trending stuff, obviously the innovation keynote came because innovation was trending so so heavily within the events industry and then the one I'm launching next week is a leadership keynote because you know that's a hot topic. So uh, obviously cool. those aren't music, but uh, it, it, we, we take trending topics and trending themes and, tr and, 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 and we try to come up with something that uh, you know we can use music to relate to. Very cool. But I, I think as far as what, what's happening in music in the in the greater marketplace, live music. People are going to see live music like never before because artists are completely invested in performing live right now, partly due to the economics of the music industry. You know. I don't know for certain, but you know, I think if if Axl Rose can reliably show up on stage on time for an entire tour, he must be highly motivated. Because I, <laughs> it used to be, it used to be a problem. It used to be a challenging spot for him. So and mm -hmm. and so I, and they're an amazing band to go see. Uh, you know, and and I just saw that like Sia and Luna George are 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 like doing a double. Bill, uh, you know, those wow. are both great singers. I think they're doing a garden or something like that I'm here in New York. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I, and I, I encourage people to just go see live music, and I encourage people to use right. live music at their events as much as possible, you know, because yeah. there's so much talent out there, and you can mm -hmm. really get something great. Do either of you have a favorite show that you've ever been to? Like, ever? Sorry, a TV show? Uh, no, no, like, favorite gig. <laughs> Oh, favorite gig. Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, I, I misheard you. Oh, goodness me. Oh, that's that's oh, that's a hard question. I think we both go to a, I go to a lot of gigs. We both do. Um, my first concert was Billy Joel and Elton John back to back playing like together. Um, that was cool. pretty mental. So I'll probably never forget that. But uh, oh, what's been good lately that I went to? I saw Bruce Springsteen for the second time this year. Uh, he never wow. fails. To, to uh, impress, um, but I think I mean obviously everyone loves their own in, in different styles of music. But like when you see a guy who's clearly so grateful for his life, 
like okay. I don't know what he does, like three hundred shows a year or something ridiculous, and uh, no show is the same. He doesn't have a set list. He pulls out lives. He pulls songs out of the audience. People hold up signs, and he just turns to the band and does that for three hours. And to see wow. people see see someone who's not going through the motions, which is a, which comes back to the musicians we use. Like we want we, we we want guys that are passionate and grateful and and happy and and really love what they do. So that. That's the most important thing about a live show for me. Watch, I hate, watching someone go through the motions just doesn't do it for me at all. So, yeah. Angus has probably seen some it. pretty crazy <laughs> stuff up close and personal, I'm sure. I'm, yeah. You know, the, I, I don't know. The, there are the things that, the, for me, like, uh, there are so many things that I spent a lot of my, my you know, 13 to 25, like, buying back catalogs. So I was already buying stuff that was, like, old. Like, oh, I can't really go see that, you know, in this context. But I probably I probably saw Black Sabbath by the time, like, Ronnie James Dio was the lead singer. I saw them mm -hmm. on the Bob Rules tour. Um, so I'd never seen Ozzy, Tony, and Geezer, like, all playing together. And then, like, oh. I finally saw them together at an Ozfest, and then I just went to see them on this last tour. And then, and it just, you know, it's like it just you you well up because you're like, mm -hmm. there they are, you know. Yeah, and I think they're about yeah. to play in London as well. They're, that's like yeah, the last ever time. Yeah, it's it's yeah. It, it, these things are tremendous, and and you know they're not going to happen again. And more and more, there's this generational shift going on, and there are artists that you need to see now if you mm. ever. If you ever want to see them, like it didn't impact me that much when I went, but uh, I went and saw Nirvana play on the U oh, wow. tour, right? So it gets this reaction, and like I never, when I saw it, I was like, everybody knew "Smells Like Teen Spirit," yeah. and there weren't really any hits from the new record yet, and it was just yeah. out, and it was at the New York Coliseum, which has been torn down. It's like where they used to have the boat show, and uh -huh. so like. So I saw that, and then I remember telling a cousin of mine who's younger than me, I was like, she made a, some reference to Kurt Cobain. I was like, oh, I saw Nirvana. She said, you saw Nirvana? <laughs> and that was the first time I felt, like, really old. I was like, oh, my God, I'm old. <laughs> wow, that's so cool, though. What about you, Laura? First ever oh, my concert? gosh. Oh, sorry, favorite concert? Favorite What's concert? That? Oh, yeah. That's uh, Laura's my favorite, favorite concert? concert? I would say... Uh, the one that immediately comes to mind, and you're right, like there's there's different concerts for different genres. I mean, but I would say one of the big blowout shows is that I saw Sigur Ross, the oh, Icelandic yeah. band. That was going to be my answer, but I didn't know if anyone would know who they were. Yeah, I don't know if anybody who's watching right now knows oh, who they are, but check yeah. them out. Wow. It's this very ethereal, like, I, I can't even describe how how they sound but they're this amazing Icelandic band and I saw them in this super this really really big auditorium and uh, and actually it was the auditorium of where I graduated college and surprisingly wasn't sold out like at all so we got pretty good seats and just the whole experience of it all was just it was so incredible it was just yeah. uh, couldn't describe it, but yeah, it was just a unique experience. I'm sure oh, that yeah. they, more, it's, they it's do that ridiculous. every day, but mm. yeah, it's just, it was this really, really great experience. Yeah, you know, I it's remember probably, seeing probably them. Probably uh, I remember seeing them at a music festival, in an outdoor festival in Australia, and this mm. huge marquee, I think about 10,000 people. And for some reason, I, I still don't know to this day, half the audience on one side was lying down, listening, like look like asleep, and then half the audience on the other side was all standing up, kind of just enjoying it. So I was in the standing up side, and I had to go to the bathroom, and it's like real dark. And I walked out of my area, was halfway across, across the tent, and looked around, and it looked like everyone had like passed out during this. <laughs> and I didn't realize. I was like, what the hell? What's going on? <laughs> that's that's what I love about Sigur Some people are going, you know, loving it. Other people just lie down and just, you know, just contemplate. Um, they're incredible. Wow, oh, awesome. Um, well, we're almost at time here, folks. This is a great show. Um, the last question we ask on every show is, do you have any new, awesome, cool resources that you all want to share for the folks who are tuned into Dave's uh, show? Websites, blogs, books, gadgets, podcasts, Spotify playlists. What, what do you got? Well, 
Yeah, we, we got our one, Angus. So we, yeah, we, if, if anyone is a free resource, if anyone needs playlists for events um, and can't, but, you know, doesn't have the budget for a band or whatever the reason is, if you go to our Spotify channel, we've got about fifteen of them, like summer playlists, every season, cocktail event playlist, gala dinner playlist, instrumental. So you know, to cover most standard events, just so people don't have to do do it themselves. Um, cool. As far as stuff that isn't involved with us, you know, I'd love to give a plug to um, Sylvia Pellegrini at Events Uncovered. Love her. Love she, her. She does, she does a great uh, weekly interview with, with industry heavyweights. Uh, Mike McCallan. Do you know Mike, Laura? He's... Mike McCallan, yes. He has, um, doesn't he have a podcast? He has, he has a podcast. Yeah, uh, Grass, Grass Shack Media. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, he and he's just a, 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 an absolute legend. Um, oh, what else? Angus, any other ones? Event icons. Yeah. This is an awesome. Website. <laughs> Check out event icons. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, I, no, I mean those those ones that Sam referenced uh, are awesome. I mean that's, I you know just keeping abreast of things. That's mm. what we do. That's how we yeah. Start. It's 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 just it's so cool to see people that just champion our industry and you know do things like this. Um, there's the Mice Blog as well, who who do a live. Yeah, they I'll, and I'll put all these. So they do. I think it's oh maybe every Tuesday from nine till ten p.m. That's UK London time. Um, it's a live Twitter Q and A that anyone can oh. you know things about the event industry. Just I just love that people care enough to do that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and to to, uh, to do these things that are just about promoting the industry and how awesome it is that we all work in and are so lucky to work in. So, um, yeah, and like yourself, of course, and like Will. So we yeah we we genuinely do appreciate being invited oh, and, and doing this. Thanks for being a part of it. Yeah. All right. No well, thank you both for joining today's show. This was incredible. Um, can't wait to unleash some ACDC at my next event. I'll let you all know how it goes. <laughs> um, and for all of you who joined us today, thank you so much. This is indeed a weekly show, uh, Event Icons. And if you want to get notified, just be sure to sign up at event-icons.com. And if you can't join us live, um, you can always uh, join the hashtag, which is hashtag Event Icons on Twitter. And this show happens every Wednesday. So if there's an event icon you'd like us to uh, interview or bring on the show, uh, please tweet us. Um, be sure to tweet Will Curran, who typically runs the show. He's at, Will, at It's Will Curran on Twitter. And I'm at Lord Lopez on Twitter, but the L's are ones. So we'll twist <laughs> there. Um, there's a lot of Lord Lopez's out there, I guess. Um, so thank you again, both Sam and Angus, for joining us, and we'll see you all next time on Vent Icons. Thank you so much. Thanks, and thanks thank to you. Will. Thanks, guys.